Hello and welcome to the BVB update for August 1st. I'm Schiff from Bootsko and in this format I cover Borussia Dortmund news and other shenanigans of the day. And today I start where I have left off yesterday with the confirmation by Kicker that Niklas Süle will be out for two or three weeks. And of course yesterday I did ask you guys uh, how Dortmund should go on about replacing Niklas Süle and uh, you have commented quite well. David Wright, for example, Wright said, while I would rather see a Kanji can seem playing with all other factors than we have uh, LL Cool Ray <laughs> saying, my guess is that Hummels will start, but that would be a mistake. I think Akanji and Schlotterbeck would make much more sense. We are at a point where I only see Hummels as useful when playing with three center backs. And uh, Marius says, in his opinion, you need to start Akanji and Schlotterbeck but I guess it won't happen. I'm afraid that Hummels will be completely overrun by DRB and Co. Yeah, me too, Marius, me too. And lastly, Adrian McLean writes, relying on Akanji makes no sense if this is truly to be a fresh start for BVB and move to a different mentality and culture throughout the club. People aren't seeing the big picture. Why should we use a player that wants to leave but can't even find a team? So thank you all for sending them in. Uh, I always love reading your comments and your opinions. And uh, yeah, moving on. To the next story, uh, Borussia Dortmund uh, are planning to sign a new striker uh, within the next two weeks is what uh, Watz writes. And uh, one of those new strikers could be, according to Marca, Giovanni Simeone from Alas Verona. Uh, of course, he is the son of Diego Simeone. And Marca writes that Borussia Dortmund's entourage is planning to travel to Verona on Thursday to negotiate with the Serie A side. Giovanni Simeone is uh, 27 years old and he's under contract until 2026 and currently he's valued around 17 million euros by Transfermarkt.com. He scored 17 goals in his 36 league appearances last season. But uh, yeah, I'm not entirely sure if this is going to happen because Dortmund, uh, as previously reported, only have about 10 million euros to play with and I think his transfer fee will be much higher and I think... He's on the way to Napoli, so uh, <laughs> yeah, don't get your hopes up. If you ha if you even have hopes, I personally don't know the player. I'm not entirely sure he would even fit Dortmund's uh, player profile because I think they want a player that is good in terms of link-up and hold-up play and Giovanni Simeone does not strike me to be a player of that profile. So with that, we can move on to another striker and uh, that is from the same article of but that uh, also reported that Dortmund are looking for a new striker and that is that Yusufa Mukoku has been presented with a long-term contract that is ready to be signed. However, it is not expected to be signed in the near future. According to various sources, Watz right, Mukoku first wants to wait and see how a situation at Dortmund is developing, what his perspective is. Basically, Mukoku knows what he's getting from Borussia Dortmund. He knows that this club has an excellent record in developing young players and using them at the highest level. And they also write, a loan could be interesting, for example, to an ambitious second division club, but that lower division club then should have a profile similar to Dortmund where they usually dominate their games, have a lot of possession against deep-lying opponents and rely on pressing. It is certainly an interesting situation with Mokoko being on an expiring deal and so I will keep an eye on that. I will also keep an eye, only a brief one however, uh, on a rumor that links Rafael Guerrero to Manchester City. With The Athletic yesterday writing that Manchester City's pursuit of Mark Kukureya has stored and thus they can be expected to explore new options. Borussia Dortmund's fullback Rafael Guerrero had been scouted and followed in the past, but the 28 year old is not expected to be let go at a feasible price. And if you ask me, I actually don't really see this happening at all. I think this is just one of many rumors uh, that Manchester City will now be linked with. So let's just move on to a message that Sebastian Alea uh, yesterday posted and I'm just going to play it here. BVB fans, as you know, I can't be here with you today, but I really appreciate the support you gave me. And uh, I'm looking forward to playing in front of you in the yellow wall. So please have a good start of the season. I will follow you and all the best. Once again, get well soon, Sebastian Alea. That was obviously a nice message uh, amid Borussia Dortmund's family day where uh, the Dortmund players were presented in the Westfalenstadion and so, of course, was head coach Edin Terzic who, uh, as you would expect, gave a little speech uh, to the fans present. And uh, since I didn't see a translation of that anywhere else, I'm going to uh, 
give you the quotes now. Uh, he said, first of all, hello, everyone. It's amazing to be here. Thank you for the great welcome. And then he continued saying, well, since I've got a chance to address everyone here, I've known this club for a very long time now. I had the pleasure to watch many legends play football here. What I learned is that 11 Borussen won't be enough to achieve our big dreams, neither our squad of 28 players, but we need every single team member, every single employee, and we need you, the fans. We need your support to achieve our big goals. And then uh, talking about the Leverkusen game, he said six more sleeps and we will play here in the most beautiful stadium in the world. Let's also make it the loudest stadium in the world. And uh, then sort of, he had a plea to the fans where he said, come into this ground with a lot of anticipation and excitement. Come with a lot of positive energy. We need you. We have to make sure that as soon as you leave the stadium, you cannot wait to come back again. That is our task. Thank you very much. So yeah, a, a nice heartwarming speech there by Edin Tessic. Obviously uh, something you would expect from a true Borussen uh, as he is. And uh, yeah, I was uh, very happy to watch that. Obviously, <laughs> it got the crowd going a little bit. And I, I think it's important to uh, grow the relationship between uh, fans and uh, coach and the whole team like that. And uh, yeah, this is, I guess, one of the reasons why I think Eden Tessic is such a good fit. Because just everyone loves the guy. <laughs> but there was also this very cool photo yesterday where Borussia Dortmund had many legends out on the field and uh, their cups and trophies starting with the Cup Winners' Cup in uh, 1966. Uh, obviously, the Masterschale and the Champions League Trophy, the Club World Cup, DFB Pokal, etc. And you really had uh, legends that are still alive from almost er every generation. Be it Ziggy Held, Kalle Riedle, Lars Ricken, Michael Sorg, Amoroso, Koller, Everton, Großkreuz, Schmelzer, Omojela, Weidenfeller, uh, Paul Lambert was there. Really a remarkable amount of Borussia Dortmund legends, but I do not have the time to rattle through all of them now uh, because there were so many there. But uh, yeah, that is all I have for you today. Uh, as always, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Goodbye.